So what I was doing for years when I recorded electric guitar, and um, I think this is what a lot of people naturally do when they do that, um, they stick the mic pretty close to the speaker, like really on the grill. And this is great for isolation, especially when you're in a live situation. You can block out a lot of other sounds when you're just close to the speaker or close to the source. Um, and the other thing that happens is um, if you're conscious of that or not, um, I think it doesn't matter. You just increase the proximity effect a lot when you're close to a sound source with a directional microphone like an SM57 or like the most microphones or pretty much all the microphones we use on a guitar cap um, are directional. So you increase this very broad low end bump um, in your signal and this makes your sound appear more full and therefore we're kind of tempted to put it really close so we get this proximity effect. But I think the downside um, to that is, and the reason I had more success like uh, a couple of last years was just backing the mic off a little bit. You have like this um, two-dimensional array like layout um, on the speaker of frequencies. It's not like no matter where you put the mic, you have like a similar sound. Um, everyone who recorded a guitar cap, I think once or twice, knows when you go more towards the center with the mic, you increase, the sound increases a lot in high mids and high end. So there is like this two-dimensional thing to the speaker. And when you very close with the microphone to the speaker, you know, imagine a flashlight, you know, the focus point gets really, really small, like the hottest point, the loudest point of this microphone is really, really small. And when, you, when you're really, really close, it really matters a lot where this exact point is and it's sometimes really hard to find the right balance, especially also with the proximity effect where you have this increased low end. I think it doesn't make it easier all the time, but I would love to know your thoughts on that. And um, to have a point where you have this kind of balanced sound. I mean, what do you in general, generally speaking, want with the guitar sound is a full and present and open sound. So the reason I think the backing off is a good thing, the backing off with the microphone is you just increase what the microphone, the polar pattern sees um, since this, the frequencies are like laid out in this two-dimensional um, uh, way, like you increase just what the microphone sees and it's easier to place a mic where you have the low end, but you also kind of see the high mids with the microphone and the top end. Basically, I chose a cardioid mic. It's not a 57, but um, it's a microphone I have that's kind of in between a large diaphragm condenser and a, ch and a generic um, dynamic microphone. Sound-wise and capsule size-wise, it's right in between. So um, it makes a good uh, example. And what I did basically is I went right in between the center of the speaker and like the very um, edge of the speaker where you normally most of the time end up using a 57 or some cardioid microphone. Perhaps not a ribbon, but a um, dynamic or a, a large diaphragm condenser. And I placed it where I had like right the, the, the right amount of um, high end and not too much. And I just didn't lose too much bottom end, so right this spot. Um, basically the spot where I always feel like I basically need more top end and I really mean like 4K and above and then 8K, like somewhere there. It's kind of hard to do this with an amp with a treble or something like that or with a pedal. You almost have to do it in post-production uh, most of the time. But when you go more towards the center, if you're, when you're really close to the, to the speaker, um, it's very easy to then get in a place very, very quickly with very little movement where you have way too much high mids and then you go back and then you have to lift it in post-production more. So I went from this um, perfect <laughs> spot, in my opinion, um, with still lacking a little bit of top band, and um, then I just backed it off just to one position, like it's almost two inches, um, yeah, around five centimeters here in Europe, here in snowy Switzerland, um, right there. And it's actually surprising um, 
I'm actually glad I did this hard, I did this this hardcore test right now, um, because it's honestly surprising in what happened. Um, I just um, came to a conclusion over time when I just tried stuff out, but having it really um, level matched, a little bit processed side by side, and flip in between, it's kind of interesting what actually happens. So let's just take a look um, here. On the top side, we have the, uh, it's a Groove Tubes mic, therefore I wrote GT. Herb is my amplifier, it's a diesel Herbert. <laughs> um, that's the close, the close microphone. And this is the far, and by far I mean just this uh, two inches of offset. I think I can show a picture here uh, in the video. So yeah, let's check it out. And it kind of, um, yeah, it did what I, what I said in the intro and what um, what I expected, but there were also some things that I basically just noticed now by listening to it a lot. Um, it's the bridge part of the song you've heard before. Um, I think it's a good guitar part to illustrate this type of effect. Both sounds have some sort of processing because I'm basically interested in what will it sound like in the mix. And of course, I don't have mix context here, but it's just like from a lot of experience. Um, this is what I typically would add and of course the amount of the filters that I um, chose uh, will depend on the mix then, but here just a side by side so they feel similar and I will show you later what I did with the plugins exactly. So let's listen to this first. This is the close one. <laughs> interesting to me it's just it's not so much it's perhaps that distance to this distance so very very little di difference but what I can tell I would say is I can hear a different feel in the low end and this is really what is what it is all about for me it's how does it feel um, yeah you can also say what does it sound like but to me it's more important what makes what makes um, what does it make me feel like immediately and immediately I always found that the distant microphone sounded really more distant and not that close. But the question really is why? And I was kind of surprised that this little distance made such a huge impact in the complexity of the signal. You cannot talk of room sound reflections here because I'm still, this is a really dead sounding room. I was kind of high up on the speaker so there is no reflection point on either side. And, and the floor also not. So it's just really a, a difference of what the microphone sees. This is what I, what I um, would argue. <laughs> and uh, it just sees a, more, a bit more complex sound because it sees more parts of the speaker. I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's true. Um, um, at least it, it sounds really different. It sounds more complex. It, sounds, it has a bit more depth when you point it away a little bit. You lose this kind of pointiness in the low end a little bit, and the low end actually gets in a way bigger and in another way a bit smaller. It's interesting. I think the sound generally just gets a little bit bigger. It feels a bit more roomy, but it's really close still. Um, so if you put another instrument on um, besides it, like a drum, you know, all this room feel would be completely disappeared. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that's always a good thing when you can get a, a little bit of room sound or of size into a sound um, yeah without making it um, reverby when I use a room mic I always use a dedicated room mic I never had success with backing off the mic too far and pointing to the speaker it always sounds really fizzy yeah pointing the mic away from the speaker is really a good idea with guitar room micing in my opinion but that's another topic um, yeah so the low end kind of is more bloomy on the distant on the distant microphone one. Um, it feels more open as it if has um, more top end to it or just also a little bit more high, high mids to it. Um, 
but yeah, it doesn't feel so close, like this very, very close, close mic, and it loses a little bit this 200, 150 to 250 pointy low end thing that the close proximity one has. So I just will play him again. You can then uh, see what you think. Close. bigger. It's level matched by the way. <laughs> I tried my best. So let, let's just loop a little section here. Just like that. Um, just like that. Let's see. Let's start with the close one and then I flip. You will see the solo button flip here. Okay, make it a little bit longer. That's a bit annoying. Not as annoying as it sometimes gets, but it's pretty annoying. So it really depends on the style of music you're making. Um, now to the processing, I had to add more top end to this sound than to the uh, sound um, the microphone where the microphone was far further away. But it's just like I can show you. So this is the the close, and this is the far away omnichannel. Um, let's see the close one. Yep. I boosted 4.4 shelf at 4K here, around 4K I had 3.4, so it's a dB difference. And then I, I really like this narrow band, 8K somewhere around there, push reminds me of an SSL 4K E, high band bell shape. 4.4 um, here and here I had also a dB less, so I had to push more top end into the close mic the one. Um, but it's still, the far away still feels more open to me, still. It's kind of hard to match it. Um, and in the low end, it was also the same. I have more low end with the close one, with the proximity one. So I didn't boost so much shelf. I shelved lows until 300, 1.4. And on the other, I shelved 2 dB on the one that was further away. I, I used the thump on both. Um, it's just a great thing for guitar caps. It gives you this cabinet thump. It's really cool. And also, it's very worth playing with the resonance knob here. Uh, it also genera generates a little bit more thump in conjunction with the high pass filter. Um, but other than that, um, and there was some differences in... This is the close and this is the far. Yeah, that, that looks very similar. I had to cut a little bit around 2k, a little bit above 2k in both, kind of ended up the same almost. Mm, ended up really similar, I wouldn't take that. I just found I have a little bit more 2k-ish sound in the sound that was in the microphone that was a little bit further away. Um, but depends on context whether you like that or not, whether this is a good thing or not. Yeah, I think that was the testing. Um, I'm glad I did it. Um, yeah, because both sounds really work. I just record, recently recorded a lot of new ideas with this uh, method a little bit further away and I just liked all the sounds that came, came out of it. And uh, yes, you lose the proximity effect, but if you're still in a place with, with the microphone where you actually have the fundamental notes, let's say uh, a standard tuned guitar starts at around 80 hertz and then um, the fundamental notes increase like four, five, six, seven hundred 700 hertz, when you go really high up the neck. If you really capture that stuff well, that you really have it, and it's not just thin, but you also have the high mids and the highs captured, it's very easy then in the post-production to kind of mimic this uh, proximity effect and just to uh, grab a very broad EQ and just boost the lows and they really are there and are coming uh, forth. So yeah, that's just what I found out and I really hope that uh, this helps. <laughs> just back up the mic a little bit and see if you get a more even frequency response or in um or if you uh, it's just easier to get an even frequency response like that yeah so i hope you enjoyed that 
and um, hope it helps, and uh, see you next time with another rare tip. Bye.